Hi everybody, welcome to Cruise Shop Save. This is Cruise Chat and this week I have a very special guest. It's Ana Lucia Beltran. How are you, my love? Hi, Melissa. I'm super excited to be here with you all the way from Canada to the UK to the world. I know. Thank you for having me. I know, and you are an incredibly busy lady. And so I am so grateful for you to take the time to talk to me. Um, we go out every Friday and we just talk about cruise ships and you have a long history with cruise ships. Please tell me if you can, when did you start working on board cruise ships? Oh, Melissa, well, you and I have that in common. Cruise ships we do. run in my veins. When I was 20 years old, meaning 20 years ago, I gave up my age. Wow. 20 years ago, I left for the first time on my first contract. It was on Carnival Cruise Lines. And I started in hospitality. And next thing you know, I, I entered into this magnificent, beautiful world of the diamond industry. While I did 10 years on ships, to be exact. So wow. from 2001 to 2011. Why did we never meet on cruise ships? Like, if we're fast friends now, but I don't know why we never met on cruise ships. But so you, so you were on Carnival. What was your first position? Well, I actually entered the Carnival Cruise Lines. Uh, you know, twenty year old. I signed up as a waitress, and I thought it's a funny story because I thought I, I come from Lima, Peru originally. I thought I was going to go to the main dining room. I thought the cruise lines were like the Titanic, very luxurious. I said I'm going to make lots of tips. And I ended up uh, hired as a staff waitress at 20 years old for the first time. So I was like, okay, I got to start from the bottom, but nothing's going to stop me. And then shortly after, they were actually looking for Spanish speaking uh, hostess for the dining room to assist the maitre d' to do the, uh, the weddings, to coordinate the weddings on board. So it was a big, big position shortly after I joined in 2001 at the Tyson Carnival while I was on the ship. And, and I got it. I got it after five months of pushing very hard. Uh, so then, yeah, I did uh, six years in Carnival, but pretty much as a hostess most of the time, which was, it taught me a lot about hard work, organization, public relations, you name it. It was, it was an amazing experience uh, in hospitality for six years there. Wow. Well, one thing I, I absolutely know about you is that you are an incredibly hard worker. And I'm not surprised in that short space of time, you are where you are, which is, we're going to tell everybody where you are at the moment. But carry on telling me about your story, because this is absolutely fascinating. Because you, I mean, you are, well, I'll tell people what you are in just a minute, but carry on telling me your story. So where did you go after being on Carnival for six years? Yeah, um, well, continuing that quest, I was working hard. And you know, when you come from Latin America, I was sending money to my family. And, and, and that's another story to say, because, you know, I, I left to Peru to help myself and to help my family too. Uh, and then I saw a position, I was in Europe, in Italy, one of the newest carnival ships or the newest carnival ship in the world at the time, Carnival Freedom. You, you might have heard of, of it when it came out. And I saw on that ship, um, a beautiful uh, three people entering into the art gallery, which was across from the dining room where I was at. Newest ship in the world, keep in mind, dream team, everybody's, you know, the best of the best went to that, to that ship. And I was intrigued by it. I saw, wow, art auctioneers, they're selling art. I loved art. I studied fashion design back in Peru. So I was curious. Next thing you know, I, you know, I, I got the shot from the art auctioneer to audition for that position, which at the time only English speakers, like people with, who spoke English as a first language got those positions. Uh, I did three months training with them on board. I had to quit Carnival, make a big move, got hired uh, by the, the biggest company there is, Park West, and uh, went on a new quest, went back on ships, but this time as an associate art auctioneer. And that was the next level for me. Became, becoming an independent contractor, first of all, you know how it is, Melissa, you're on your own, you manage your own budgets, you pay your own people, and you are there to sell. So I was mm -hmm. there uh, for a year. Shortly after, I decided to take a little break from ships, only three months, <laughs> and then decided to come back shortly after, but this time entered the diamond industry, which I already saw while I was in the art auction world on board, which was fascinating to me. And the next thing you know, you know, I, I, I did uh, two, three more years uh, until I moved to Canada after. Wow. That, that, was, that was a little bit of a synthesis of my 10 years of ships. 
gosh, 10 years. <laughs> and in that time, you went from being a staff room waitress. So if anyone doesn't know, that's a waitress to the crew down in the um, bottom of the ship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very different world, right? Very <laughs> different world. Walk. You couldn't even walk in passenger area. I remember I had to ask for permission no. just to see the passenger area oh. overnight. And it was like, a, a I took it as a challenge. I said, okay, this is what I work from here to get up there. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. And so when you say you got into diamonds, what do you mean by that? Well, I saw while I was in the art auction, which was an amazing experience. Uh, I saw as well on the stage after we were doing the seminars and all, all the art uh, expositions, I saw the diamond girl <laughs> that was on the stage talking about diamonds, talking about gemstones, promoting the duty free shopping. And it was such a brilliant uh, atmosphere. Then I, you know, I was talking to them at the time I was married. So I had my engagement ring. They were looping at the engagement ring, I remember. So I was fascinated and intrigued as well by that. And when I took that break, a uh, very short break from ships and then decided to come back, I had a choice. I could come back to keep doing the art or I could come back and take on the new challenge, which was the diamond, the diamond world and the jewelry. As women, Melissa, we know it triggers us. Uh, I was curious to learn and the, we had the chance to be trained in the diamond district, as you will know, in, mm -hmm. in New York. So I was like, I'm going to take on this because it feels right. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad I did. It was a big moment for me to decide which way wow back on ships and you know it was amazing i enjoyed doing the shopping shows i learned about uh, doing television we had to record our own commercials mm -hmm. as you know do like a manage our little shopping channel on, on board the ship uh i loved every conference we had i mean the, the time meeting amazing people i'm surprised we didn't cross paths we know a lot know. of the same people at the same time i was with us yeah. job. i mean we traveled to alaska i mean we went to europe doing a shopping program or in the caribbean mainly you name mm -hmm. it it was a dream job Honestly, I would have never left, um, but you know, big decisions. And then I moved to Canada, obviously it was a new chapter, but while I did um, and, and learned about the diamond world and the luxury brands, I mean, we, we were promoting brands such as Cartier, uh, mm. Hublot, Hearts on Fire, I mean, you name it. It was, for me, it was a dream come true to learn about it, to talk about it. We were, we were the early influencers on board yeah. before, yeah. before social media. Uh, I know, yeah. And totally. we had to do it the hard way. Remember, like, just hiring our cameramen and uh, from from that managed the shopping networks, uh, or the, not the shopping networks, but the TV networks more, yeah. and recording in the stores, travel channel style. Oh my gosh, I remember that time, uh, sweating in the Caribbean, uh, seeing people shopping <laughs> for their diamonds. I mean, we were working on full commission. There's no secret of that. I mean, it was we sure. were selling or we were selling. So. Yeah. For me, it was a golden time of the shopping, uh, duty-free shopping world, I think, the, yeah. those years. Um, it, I just have the best memories. But um, that, that was, that was, I think, the best job I ever had. Until now, if I will have to describe working for somebody, doing that specific job yeah. as a shopping a presenter, as a diamond expert on board, mm -hmm. nothing could beat that. Wow. And what year was that? I did 2009, 2010, and 2011 was my last year. Wow. Okay, so since that time, you have gone on to be brand ambassadors for some great brands. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, I decided to move to Canada and, uh, you know, I, I left that amazing job as a job as a shopping shopping guide. And I realized when you move to a different country, as you know, I'm not Canadian, more, more Canadian, although I'm a Canadian citizen now. I realized when I moved here, Oh my gosh, if I want to stick to the jewelry world, nobody knows me here. I have to start from the bottom again, earn my, yeah. my reputation. I did even go to a jewelry store to start working retail one-on-one -on -one because I realized, you know, I'm going to learn from the goldsmiths. I'm going to see what is to work, how the people in the Caribbean that we were working with are working behind the counter. Did that for a year and a half. Shortly after, uh, finally got my uh, opportunity with a big jewelry brand. I don't know if to mention it here, from New York. That we used to promote on the shopping program and I became right. a corporate trainer on in Canada. So I got wow. the chance they, they have their jewelry all across department stores here, just like Harrods in the UK mm -hmm. or Macy's in the US. They have jewelry here in a big department store chain, 90 stores across Canada. I was flying all the time 
teaching people that were selling the jewelry behind the counter in department stores and hosting special events for them as well. So you name it, I, I, you know, I was, I was home, I think three months a year. The rest of the time it was flying with a suitcase, a million yeah. dollars worth of jewelry sometimes on the suitcase, <gasps> flying, doing the events. I don't know how we did it. <laughs> Gosh. I mean, it was, it was tremendous, but five years. And you know, when you are here, it's not the warm Caribbean, like just like in the UK, but here in yeah. Canada, winter time, dragging that suitcase with training manuals, television, tele, you know, and small TV. To not glamorous, it. really. Not glamorous, but always in high heels, I have to say. <laughs> so five years of that, that was amazing. And while I was doing that, Melissa had some amazing opportunity. Uh, well, I, I got myself as a freelancer selling jewelry on the one and only biggest shopping network here in Canada. So my dream of going oh, wow. real TV, let's say, in Canada. Yeah. Was, nice. That was back in 2015. Uh, while I was doing my job, my corporate trainer job, dragging the suitcase, sometimes I had to drag the suitcase, pack the jewelry, I remember, change quickly and go to the network to do the diamond show at night. And then over the wow. it was crazy times, but uh, I did it and, and I loved every minute of it. Uh, I couldn't believe, like we sold a million, I sold a million dollars, over a million dollars in 24 hours. But that was a couple of years ago. First wow. time the network sold that number in diamonds. Wow. <laughs> in one day so it was you know it just yeah. kept progressing and progressing so i'm very grateful for the opportunities uh, yeah but, but yeah it's because, it's because of your passion you, it's genuine you you can tell that you're genuine from the moment you got that job as the diamond girl on carnival you found your passion do you not agree yeah i think that's it the the motor behind or the yeah the behind uh that explains you how yeah. yeah you you, you have to tell you do, right and i think that's why i chose the diamonds versus art even though i love art diamonds became a passion and uh jewelry in general became a passion to, yeah. to see women uh yeah. like you and i choosing what they want and wearing i mean especially diamonds is something that you can wear every day and it lasts a lifetime and beyond now our life Life. yeah it, it oh it's amazing i love diamonds so now so from let me just recap so from a waitress in the crew mess on okay. carnival literally, literally 20 years ago you are now an international jewelry designer this that's, is incredible I, I just love this story anyone who's watching this has just got to be inspired by you Oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I cannot believe it. Like I see my catalog behind you and I'm like, yeah, this is real. It's, it's happening. It's, um, it's, you know, your, I think the ultimate dream uh, yeah. with a lot of work. I mean, you know, the things that go behind the scenes just to make business happen now with awesome. your, your name. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's sometimes I don't believe it, but then I realize, oh my gosh, it came through <laughs> in the middle of yeah. a pandemic last year, by the way, <laughs> launching. Oh, uh, well, no time like the present, but um, but so tell me about your jewelry line because these are real diamonds for real women, which yeah. I love that. And it's, I mean, I I've got all your material here. I'm actually wearing your jewelry, um, because we are representing you here in the UK, um, on the shopping network channels and beyond. And then me, by the way, I'm keeping. All of this so this is the spirit collection and <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I love I, I mean this is all designed by you so tell me what what inspired you to just create this design um literally melissa women like you right when we when we turn on the zoom today i i see you wearing the jewelry that i designed it with pencil from scratch and that it amazes me to see how beautifully it suits you, how feminine the designs are. Yeah. And, and women like you, every the inspiration behind this, these collections and, and creating even my brand is every woman that has ever shopped from me directly, whether one-on-one, -on -one, whether, you know, listen to me at a, at a show in the Caribbean, who's maybe called on TV on any shopping network in the US, in Canada, or even Australia, where I've been, uh, you know, selling at some point in time every woman that went to that department store and bought the jewelry from me one-on-one -on -one or from, from, you know, the team that, that I trained is that real person, that real woman, which is the real jewelry consumer. Because I realized doing my research before launching the brand, uh, statistics don't lie. And the statistics says actually that 80% of 
the jewelry purchases come from women themselves. Sure, men spend more dollar amounts, the 20% purchasers are men and good for them and keep buying us good engagement rings and other things but women buy three times the volume so that confirmed my experience of uh, 12 years in the jewelry industry literally selling and seeing women most of the time are the ones who pay with the credit card whether they pay with installments on the tv or whether they they, they bring their hard-earned cash to buy their own diamonds most of the time so with that in mind, you know, the experience of working with many buyers during the years and, and exposed to mass appeal when it comes to what women like when it comes to jewelry. For example, the collection that you're wearing on your earrings, um, those, those amazing earrings are from the Limitless collection, which embraces mm -hmm. infinity knots. I've done my own twist in it, uh, a little bit of a modern classic, but something that I love how it suits you. That perfect yeah. diamond weary, or the spirit collection, which you're wearing almost on on your necklace, on the on the rings. Yeah. By the way, those two rings that you have are from the same collection. One is yeah, it's perfectly the necklace, and then the the other ring I want to show. I'm wearing it the same way as you. We're combining that triple band, triple row yeah. band, and I'm putting another ring in there, just like you. So that's yeah. what I love. That versatility. We know what we like to combine. Yeah. We know what we like to stack jewelry. That real woman out there is my inspiration. And that's why I did the tagline, real diamonds for real women, because our diamonds are for the woman that really wears and buys her own jewelry. And good, good for the men as well, embracing the men that buy jewelry for themselves, which we have quite a few of, but women are the queens of buying their own jewelry. Absolutely, we know what we want. I, I agree. I just absolutely, it's so feminine. That's what I love about it. All the collections are really, really feminine. And you know, we're representing you over here in the UK and Europe. And honestly, I, I it's it suits the European tastes, the UK tastes, but it's also extremely classy for Americans. It's it's international. That's what I love about it. It's so international and it's so feminine. And, and I also love the price points and I love your environmentally friend, friendly angle as well. Would you like to speak to that a little bit? Absolutely, Melissa, because before launching the jewelry brand, which was a long dream of mine, um, you know, knowing the taste and uh, I, I've lived in Europe myself for a few years. That's another story for another day, but lived in Europe for a little bit. I lived in the US, I lived and grew up in South America. Now I live in Canada. So that, and we've been exposed to so many cultures working in the cruise industries for many years. So I think now what you were saying, I think my jewelry is the reflection of a little bit of the taste of women from different parts of the world, which makes it global. And I wanted it to be, mass appealing and very important, affordable, even before the pandemic started. And, uh, you know, I, I come from South America as well, where even diamonds are very unreachable for most people. Many women don't even dream about having a diamond because it's related, of course, it is luxury, but it's related to something very unattainable many times in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So two things when I, before I launched my jewelry, I made a big decision and big commitment to be the first, as far as I know, a female designer with her name on a Labron diamond brand, which means this is the diamond of the future. To give you an idea, if you never heard of Labron diamonds, it's the Tesla of the diamond world. It is environmentally friendly. They're always, obviously there uh, is a new way of creating diamonds without having to mine our mother earth. So they take a little bit of a, a little bit of a carbon seed, which was which has the exact same DNA as a raft diamond, 99.95% carbon in the chemical composition. They put it into machines that recreate that process of heat and pressure, pressure of 2 billion years in a matter of weeks, which is a technology that has been in the making for many, many years. I mean, they used Labron diamonds uh, for many decades in the industrial use, but it wasn't until a few years ago that the technology is so sophisticated that we can get now our gem quality diamonds, Melissa. We can get even BVS mm -hmm. clarity if we want to. We can get an SI1, mm -hmm. which is what I work with. I wanted to give a diamond of high clarity, higher clarity and in color EFG, which are colorless and near colorless combination, something very high in quality, higher than the average mine diamond out there, but not to compete because they're mine diamonds. It's just we're giving, we're able to drop the price with Labron diamonds up to 40% below to a comparable mine diamond if you're buying the same size and carat weight. So for me, that was very, very crucial. I'm like, I can bring the diamonds to the masses, 
bring you the real thing, a real diamond yeah. certified, because Labrador diamonds are real diamonds, yeah. um, at a much affordable price with a designer touch, because everything is designer, created from scratch, from a woman to, to you, the final consumer. So that was yeah. a little bit of a magical combination and the timing was right. Uh, that's, that's what my jewelry is all about. Wow. Is, is it much dissimilar to cultured pearls? When cultured pearls were introduced, uh, actually in the 1920s, I think, uh, yes, many people didn't understand and it was a new way of pretty much reproducing yeah. what Mother Nature did below yeah. the ocean and, and doing it in a man-made way, yet using yeah. a natural oyster. Uh, I wouldn't compare it 100%, but yes, no. it is kind of similar. It's a new way of oh. recreating what Mother Nature gave us. And yeah, the cultural pearls in the end are real pearls. So I would say it's... Well, I, I just <laughs> love that, that this, this technology is out there and that we can... Because mining is so invasive, isn't it? Mining is it on is. the land and the people as well. It's not... Yes. No one really knows, you know, what happens, but I do know that it's not great for the environment. Yes, I mean, there is just so much mining that we could do. And I think last year it made me think, and many people as well, reflect um, mm. how much longer are we going to keep digging our natural resources? As you said, each time they mine, I mean, nothing wrong. Obviously, the mining industry will go on forever and it's something precious that Mother Earth gives us, so we extract the gift. But now mm. if we found a better way to recreate that process using the same natural resources, but not damaging the environment anymore and recreating it in a, in a new way with the power mm. of technology uh, and, and the provenance is, is, is clean mm. 100%. We know where these diamonds came from. We knew there was, uh, it, it, it's just, I think the best of both worlds and the best gift that technology and us as humans have created. So mm. uh, I think we can embrace it. And the fact that we're getting the real thing that was important for me. We, you know, nothing wrong with getting a substitute stone. And, but if you're able to drop the price and get you the same precious diamond and yet mm -hmm. still being considered, I mean, it is a diamond in the end. Yes. For me, that's the blissful point on getting the finest jewelry you can get yeah. at an affordable price. Yeah. So, I mean, they are real diamonds. There's no question. I mean, the quality, and I mean, look how the color is unbelievable. I just absolutely white love the color. <laughs> uh, whiter than white, you know, whiter than white could be. And um, I was going to ask you, probably everyone else watching might want to know this. Um, you say that they're roughly about 40% less than uh, Mine diamonds, yeah. mined diamonds. So kind of roughly, and I might be putting you on the spot here, and I apologize, but... Well, what do some of your pieces start from? Great news. I mean, I'm trying to convert it to euros, uh, but it's okay. roughly, roughly at 200 euros and up. Uh, okay. For, for a couple of hundred euros. Yes. You can have real diamonds for, well, the, you can't but, argue with that. Yeah. It's an, fine, yeah. yeah. And a fine jewelry uh, designer piece. We have some pieces, for example, I'm, I'm not wearing one of them. We go for 6,000. Um, sure. Some of them we have available, most of the jewelry that we have available to the public right now are done in sterling silver with the 14 karat gold plating, which is very, mm -hmm. very nice because it allows- so Continuing to keep yeah. it affordable. Yeah. It's like oh, that. that's beautiful. For, for around 1200 euros. Uh, a fine piece of jewelry with over a carat of copper wow. in that micro pave, which match actually perfectly the earrings that you're wearing. Yes. I think um, I'm wearing the wrong necklace. <laughs> yeah, and the, the range is pretty much from two, 200 euros to 6,000, everything in between. For a few hundreds, you can still get a fine piece of diamond jewelry, designer diamond jewelry. Yeah. It's for hundreds, just to give a little. A, a How little much? A few hundreds. I'm just going to leave it like at the under 1,000 for a range. Cool, cool. No, no, that's great. I mean, you, you pay thousands for that. Now, I've got the same piece on here, and it's just. The sparkle is absolutely amazing. And I just love your, I mean, you know, I have all your, your stuff here. I opened up the box and it just, and you have this handwritten note. Uh, yeah. Because it is, you know, oh, you can't see it, but I'll read it. Uh, I believe each piece of jewelry is meant for someone. This piece chose you. <laughs> yes, that was- That's so sweet. You know, I just thought if, if I'm designing, I mean, if you will have seen, there is a video actually that uh, I'll share with you and it's I think on our, our website. Yes, we can play that, yeah. That shows 
how I'm designing the jewelry. And when I was designing, actually right here behind is my, my home office, my headquarters, it's yeah. everything. My condo is everything right now. But uh, when I was designing, then I thought, you know, I, I want to give that feel of when I'm designing, what I'm thinking of, and I want the final the final consumer, the woman that is opening that box to know that mm -hmm. I designed this jewelry with, with her in mind. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's how the little note came about. And I thought, and I, I insisted that every mm -hmm. piece of jewelry uh, has to come with that little handwritten note, uh, obviously printed now, but it's actually my, my hand writing in it. Nice. And I wanted to transfer that personal touch because I feel, you know, how do you know the designer is actually a, caring mm -hmm. i want very much that message out there uh i design from uh from my heart from my ideas from my experience to the final consumer when i see women like you uh or many of the women that have collected our jewelry melissa it gives me tremendous joy to see oh my gosh the, the, the jewelry just looks so good it, it, it mm -hmm. is oh, i love it it's beautiful it enhances it just gives you a little added sparkle to the already sparkling personality of each one, each one wears it. I, I just find that very, very fulfilling. Basically. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So anyone that's watching this, um, we'll put a link in the comment. The first comment, we'll put a link, a reference to your website because people can order your product online. I love that, you know, it's called Ana Lucia Beltran Diamonds, which is your name. Yeah. You back it up 100%. You're so relatable. And I got to say, you're as beautiful on the inside as you are on the outside. You're so <laughs> lovely and you're so um, approachable. And I know on Instagram, you have quite the following. Yes, on Instagram, I've been working it for three years now. And I thank every single follower because we know how hard it is to earn followers. Each follower, I'm super grateful. Yes. For. Uh, they can find me at Real Lucy TV, which is pretty much, um, I keep it as a behind the scenes of how the brand comes about. And there is another Instagram page for the brand alone, which is my actual name, and Lucia Beltran Diamonds. So with that, it's, it's interesting because I can show, I can do a little bit of freestyle on Real Lucy TV, show the behind the scenes, what's coming out. Uh, and then the final product is all on the on the brand's page. But uh, yeah, we're pretty active on social media. So every day. I think it's <laughs> don't you have on real lucy tv and again i'll put a link in the comments don't you have like forty six thousand? just roughly close to fifty thousand now so yes 50, oh my God, it's gone up since the last time i looked at it but thank you for every single person that follows that page yes yeah, and you know you're right you're right about people that won't follow you unless you're serving them unless you're giving them something okay. yes every single day i try to make a post Every single day there's stories. And on the brands page, uh, the Andalusia Beltran Diamonds, we just started that page when we launched, like shortly after November. Uh, so that's that's another page, but we keep it very catalog oriented, uh, but we yeah. post today as well in there. So it's, it's a fun combination to have two pages there. And on okay. Facebook as well, we have the same name, Andalusia Beltran Diamonds on Facebook. We have roughly shy of 10,000 followers on Facebook. For that's the brand. great. Very nice, yeah. yes. So going. if you're watching this, do follow on Anna, Anna Lucia Beltran Diamonds, Instagram, Facebook, or, or Real Lucy TV. I love that name, Real Lucy, because <laughs> you are Lucy to your friends, aren't you? Exactly. For many years, I, I went even on, on TV for many years, I used to go by simply Lucy. I translated, shortened my name <laughs> to make it commercial. Right. Um, I, kept, I kept that handle, Real Lucy TV, just you know, easy to remember, it's catchy, and it's my name in the end, just translated a little No, bit. I think it's fantastic. And, you know, I, I know that you're the hardest working lady I know. I, you are, I have here um, two publications, Charms. You wrote an article about your brand in there. And I also saw this wonderful article in uh, Preferred Luxury Lifestyle for Men. Uh, and these images of you are just wonderful. You look amazing. And I noticed that you're wearing your jewelry. So it's an article about. Yeah, it was actually a privilege to be featured in Preferred Magazine. It's an international luxury 
magazine for men, but it's based out of Canada. And I, I love the fact that you have it in your hands now. I'm wearing my jewelry. It's an article about women and cigars. Uh, and you know, I I had a I did an art uh, photo shoot last year with a cigar. The publisher and owner of the magazine saw it on social media, and then he wow. said, "Look, you got to do an article, women and cigars. What does it mean for you to smoke a cigar?" So it was a great collaboration. Six page spread. It just came out this a a April. And I'm wearing all over on every page oh, yeah. the Silver Trend Diamonds. They were so kind to feature us with the brand and the website and each piece. Yeah. That I'm so that's yeah, Lisa, that's exciting. What do you think? I mean, you had the, the pleasure of reading that. I that think article. it's an amazing article. And um, when I worked on cruise ships, I used to smoke a cigar with the cruise director. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you're South American, so I know it's it's the thing. You yeah. so, are yeah, I mean, the first time I actually smoked a cigar ever in my life, and I wrote it there on the article, um, it was on my honeymoon when I was 24 years old, sailing the Caribbean, you know, while working on cruise ship. Wow. And the second time I smoked a cigar, believe it or not, it was unfortunately when I was getting divorced, but I was, <laughs> it's, it's written there, but it's interesting how I relate to smoke a cigar in the past, at least to, with a special occasion or something that marked me. Uh, but yeah, being South American is true. It's a, you know, it's, it's a beautiful tradition, something that they do with Cuba, especially very, very well. Uh, so now it became more of a habit. There is quite a few special occasions to celebrate. So I smoke more often, once in a while still, but it means something. For me, smoking a cigar means something. The fact that they're related to, to our diamonds, I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And the other magazine that you had there, Charms Magazine, it is a lifestyle yeah. magazine based out of Toronto as well, but goes internationally online. Um, and that was an article that I wrote called From the Future for the Future, all about Labron Diamonds and our brand is featuring there as well. Uh, I've been collaborating and writing for that magazine, Melissa, a year, since a year. So I have four articles out so far on that same magazine. If they want to read wow. them, they can go on charmsmagazine.com under jewelry. They're all the articles I have in there. All about jewelry, but this one specifically I'm most proud of because it is all about Labron Diamonds. It features our brand already. It was just uh, uh, an honor to be writing. And, and mm -hmm. it's a lot of, it, you know, many people still don't know uh, about Labron Diamonds. So mm -hmm. it was refreshing to reach a new generation through that magazine and explain more about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. I know you're everywhere and you're, like I say, you're the busiest lady I know. So I'm very, very grateful that you took the time to talk to us. Um, we'll put all your links in the comments. And if you're watching this, just watch the space, Shopping Networks, High Street, um, you know, standalone boutiques, I'm thinking. <laughs> We have so much, Melissa, coming with uh, coming out with uh, with your you and your company. Uh, we're super grateful to be working with you, and we can't wait to make it to Europe. I mean, the earliest I could see you, hopefully, will be in Vegas this year. You're coming to Vegas. Yes, right? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Fingers then, crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. And the next time we see you, we already uh, have a date to be in the UK on October eighth for the. Uh, launching another exclusive launch but we'll talk about it in another time when the brand is going to be featured in the uk so the UK. we're super grateful to be doing business with you you have so many outlets for us where we cannot wait to share it with the world but it's a lot of work in progress you're the hardest working woman i know as well because well everywhere you're dealing with so many companies and we know <laughs> how it is what you do is not an easy gig i mean dealing with buyers internationally in Europe from the cruise industry and TV is is a lot a lot of work yeah. well yeah. I love it and I all I care about is uh, getting the right products in front of the right people and we have lots of cruises that are stuck at home at the moment so we've started to do this every Friday night and I know a lot of people that cruise love to go shopping and they're missing out on and also the Caribbean seems to be Caribbean and cruise lines cruise ships seem to be the platform for new and up and coming brands and so everyone's missing out on kind of all the news that's why I wanted to invite you on the cruise chat show in fact I might call it cruise and diamond chat <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> Why not? All that sparkles. And so everyone that's watching this, do head over to your website, check it out and take, you know, real, let's support Ana Lucia because what she's doing is amazing. The prices, are, the quality is great. I'm wearing a load. Of, I can't believe the color. 
It's just so look, wide. Look at that bracelet you're wearing there. Oh, it's so beautiful. Mm. You know, I'm a lady in my 50s. Oh, wow. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm, I've never That's been shy about my age. I got to ask you then, what's the secret? Because I could have never seen <laughs> a lady in your 50s. No way. Don't have children. <laughs> also, we're good then. <laughs> <laughs> don't have kids no no i love kids i have lots of nieces and nephews, like i have a niece and nephew but i never had children but i don't know if that's the secret it's probably just good genes um but you know um i i i can see this on a young teenager too like i see these pieces on millenniums that millennials i got that wrong i'm kind of just embarrassing myself i'm so old but i see it on millennials and Gen Z and uh, you know it's just such a it's a, a brand that you've really captured the spirit of femininity honest to god it's a beautiful beautiful collection and it's my honor to uh, represent you and get you on the networks and get you on cruise ships and just get this message out there because I love what you're doing it's amazing thank you so much Melissa it is an honor to be a partner with, with with you, with what you're doing, and especially in Europe, in that side of the world, for me, it's fascinating. Um, I, I thank you. Uh, like you said, the spirit collection that you're wearing actually is making an impact. We have a lot of younger generations, the millennials, yeah. loving that, the circles of life. Uh, I'm keeping in mind all age groups. I mean, I'm, I'm in my 40s, so anyone from, I would yeah. say, 20 on to 65, yeah. no expiration, there is no age group. I think each collection has something for someone, uh, regardless of age, uh, yeah. to, to, to look fabulous like you do. And you I just, agree. I just love that. it. I have no problem buying my nieces some of this jewelry. They're probably watching now going, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I recently had a, a friend of mine actually from Italy who just got uh, diamond studs, for example, from our collection. I think they started at 300 euros if I converted to euro. Um, real diamonds, diamond studs, 22 pointers in 40 wow. from our collection for her daughter. You'll see that. I think yeah. she's going to post a story. And, and I was thrilled because I'm like, wow, what a beautiful thing to give your daughter sustainable diamonds. I mean, this is the diamond yes. of the future there. Uh, you know, environmentally friendly, and that's the real thing that is on her ears at the same time. So it's for yes. me, it was very touching, and uh, to to know that that was a purchase that went for a little girl generation set. So yeah, we're pretty much covering a lot of age groups here. It's uh, beautiful to see. I agree, and actually, just on the back of what you just said, you know, a lot of young people are more conscious about what they buy, what they put in their bodies, what they put on their bodies. And I agree with you. I just think the younger generation, well, all of us have been a little bit more careful about what we buy, what we spend our money on, the mileage that has gone behind it, the environmental impact, but we still want to look beautiful and we still want to sparkle. Exactly, exactly. We have glamour at the same time with conscious, uh, you know, something very beautiful behind. And I just want to make a remark. We have our partners, uh, our manufacturing partners have a beautiful, um, they give back a lot. So for every time you buy a piece of Andalusia Beltran Diamonds through our partnership with our diamond provider, Smiling Rocks, they are donating a percentage of the proceeds of every sale towards Breast Cancer Research Foundation, wow. Life, and other two charities, Planted Tree Foundation. So they have four different charities that were part of under their umbrella, which we're very, very, very proud of because like you said, we're not only, you know, saving or preserving the environment by consuming or giving lapron diamonds instead, the real thing uh, with a cost behind. I mean, we, we know that's the way that it should be done these days and uh, we're thrilled to be part of it. That's amazing. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see you in every high street jeweler, every cruise ship, every shopping network town, because I think what you're doing is just absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough for your time today. And everyone that's watching this, head over to her website, Ana Lucia Beltran Diamonds. I'll put the link in there. But whatever you do, have a fantastic weekend. And thank you so much, Ana Lucia, for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Melissa. We can't wait to keep on working with you. Lots of things happening. So, and thank you very much to everyone who joined and follow us on our page as well on social media. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Yes, Thanks, Melissa. Bye, everyone. Bye.